PDS is about behaviours, but it's about giving coaches applicational tools that can bring it alive. So I'm not a fan of things that look good on paper or on a PowerPoint or a motivational speak if you can do nothing with it. It's about allowing you tools to allow you to be a better coach, and a better coach is allowing you to better influence the people you're with. So it's always people first. Performance is a behaviour, not an outcome. And what I mean by that is everything that we do stems from behaviour. Behaviours are the facilitation of results. But for me to drive them, who needs to understand what they look like? The players. Who needs to agree what acceptable or unacceptable is within the behaviours? Who needs to manage it live on the pitch? The players. So your ability to develop the people in front of you, whether they're children in the classroom, whether they're athletes at any level, players, that they can make effective choices, commit with intent, review the choice and the execution separately, effectively, live under any type of pressure without the need for the coach. So who has to be excellence in a coaching session? We've talked about the players, but where's the missing link right now? The coach. And if there's parents on the side, the parents. So we all need to agree what excellence looks like. What does excellence look like for a coach? What does excellence look like for a parent? What does excellence look like for the players? Because if I'm not doing my part and agreed it with the players, I'm being a bit of a hypocrite right now. So I have an expectation of players, you're this and that, and there's me emotionally going up and down, I'm frustrated sometimes, I'm getting angry, I'm shouting, I'm taking control when I said I want you to. So unless I understand what excellence is, looks like for me, unless I share that with the players and we agree that we can challenge each other, if we are unacceptable based on what we agreed, we're not really developing the type of culture environment we want to. My view is coaching is you're an influencer. So instructing, teaching, facilitating, allowing is all the spectrum of coaching. Great coaches know where to be in that moment in time with the aim of making themselves redundant. We need to be open as coaches to be able to challenge and reflect openly without thinking someone's picking on, on me or putting me under pressure. That's why I'm doing this here today in this, in this manner. What we've got to be is having a culture and environment where we go, look, it's cool to challenge if it's a value as to coach to coach, to manager to teacher, but if it's, if it's that relationship with, with players and coach, there's still, look, coach is still in charge, but there are permissions we can give players. So we need to share with them, what's me on a good day? What would be ideal me on a great day? When, I, when do I coach well? What do I do? What do I look like? What, what do I need to connect with that? When, I, when I'm coaching in a bad way, when it's having a negative impact to you, what does that look like to me? Are there times when I'm different? So it might be in training, am I different to game day? which basketball very common. I've seen some great coaching in training and then when it gets to game day they're like Tasmanian devils where someone's stolen all their food for a year. Crazy people. Same, same passion, same intent, it's not an intent issue. The coach is passionate, he wants the best out of the kids but his behaviour now is having a negative impact on the players. But it's different in two environments. So have that conversation and then you can start saying okay so how can we help each other and agree it and then set up parameters where the rule of three will be one that will help, where you see, look, there's structure to this, it will actually speed up effectiveness of training, it won't slow it down, because it's a flow. But it's a flow based on what we all agree. And I'm part of the journey, I'm not separate to it. Then you analyse all deep and reflect on the things that went wrong, but we don't analyse and put the detail on the stuff that went really well. Okay, what happened over there in a corner, Steve? Sarah, what happened there? Talk to me. What was so different about that? How can we replicate that? What did you do differently that time that you didn't do before that gave us so much success? Because we want to recognise that. Okay, now we recognise it, how can we repeat it? Because this was brilliant. So these are the type questions to drive them and to eventually them to do it themselves. 